Hi everyone, uh, my name is Alison Lee and I'm an Associate Director with Urbis here in Sydney. I'm going to be talking today about our curbsides. These are the public spaces of our city that have so much potential to help business as we build back better. Curbsides, when they've got a mixture of different uses, tend to attract more people and in doing so, are better for business as we recover in these pandemic years. But as Gabrielle's also already mentioned this morning, they tend in Sydney to happen as one-off projects, as pop-ups, as trials. Why don't they happen more extensively? Well, part of the issue lies in transport economics. It's a very well-established discipline, which is, it is very good at telling us if we increase the traffic flow down this street or improve travel time savings, it will result in X amount of economic benefit. Less is well known about the economic benefits of improving a place. So what is the economic benefit of things like a tree canopy that shades a footpath, of wider footpaths, of better bus stops, of dining parklets and the like? Now, during the last few years, a lot of jurisdictions have had to take a leap of faith, even though they didn't know, and implement a range of programs that have helped businesses stay open who are struggling with indoor capacity limits. Over a six-month period, for example, the number of outdoor dining permits issued in Melbourne, in inner Melbourne, increased by 73%. It was massive. I'm really happy to say that the dining parklet is here to stay. Now, last year, Urbis worked with a number of these councils in Melbourne to evaluate their outdoor dining programs that they had implemented as a pandemic response. It was really important to understand what people thought about these new outdoor dining spaces. If you ask the businesses that had these new permits, those that were next door or residents in the area that had them, the response was overwhelmingly positive. Now, it is worth remembering that the mixed use of our streets shouldn't be as controversial as it is. It is, after all, traditionally, how our streets have been used, with a variety of users. It is only relatively recently that we have transitioned to, in most streets, a monoculture of cars. We are like that frog in a pot of increasingly hot water it's crept up on us, so it is time to intervene. Now, I am actually not advocating for the removal of all car parking spaces, far from it. What I am advocating for, however, is a more nuanced mixture of our curbs. Now, you may well ask, if you take out car parking spaces, won't this negatively affect business? And it's a good question, but we only think that way because we have wrongly equated car parking with a thriving retail economy, and it's just not so. You only need to look at any of our high streets or city centres that have heaps of parking and heaps of vacancy rates to know that's not the case. Now, the work that Urbis have been doing can show that, yes, car parking does have an impact in terms of expenditure in our high streets and centres. However, things, uses of the curb like dining parklets and, car, and bike parking more than hold its own. Now, in the context of retail now, not just competing with big box, but also competing with online, the shopping experience, the physical act of shopping, needs to be much more about the experience and the positive experience of a place. So, why not be creative? Why not stop? Why, we don't need to stop just at dining parklets when we think about ways to support business. Why not also think about things like dining car carts or coffee carts, markets, food vans? Why not also think about things like outdoor entertainment venues, sports clubs and gyms using our curbsides more. The list really is only limited by our imaginations. Now, a few years ago, I was involved in a project in Melbourne 
that saw the removal of a couple of car parking spaces and their replacement with a whole bunch of bike parking. It was originally really controversial, but over time, people, including businesses, grew to love it. That original infrastructure has now been significantly expanded and is much more a type of thing you see in Melbourne these days. Now, stepping away from just supporting business, what about we also think about our curbs as ways to support thriving communities? Why not things like art galleries and museum outreach? Why not about library classes being able to use our curbs, games in general, and good old-fashioned green space? 2022, children playing in our street has almost been completely lost. Now, incidentally, these are all the types of things that we really missed and craved during lockdown, right? Now, thinking also about the tourism sector and how to attract people back and tourists back, our southern cousins are really good at this, and they're like alchemists and have turned the grittiest of their curbsides into tourist gold. Now, the pandemic years have afforded us, hopefully, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to rethink our curbs and be a little bit more playful with them. People love it, and it's really good for business. So in Building Back Better, let's use our curbs to entice people away from their online streaming service, their home office, and their delivery services, and help them to remember what they loved about coming out to the city in the first place. Thank you. <laughs>